Hi guys, welcome back to Honest Straightforward Reviews. Today, I'm really excited to bring you guys the review of the ASUS RTX 3060 TUF Gaming OC. This is the OC version. I'll get into those versions because ASUS has got a lot of versions. I'll get into them later on. But guys, I've been working at this tirelessly for over two weeks to get you guys this card. So please stick around to the end and watch the complete video. If you guys want to just skip ahead to the graphs, they're about midpoint. I'll also include some of the times down as well down in the comments as to when everything will start now without further ado let's get into the graphic card so the first section I'll just introduce the graphic card and in the second section we'll be looking through the graphs and the gaming test and things like that and towards the end I'll be giving you guys my verdict in regards to this card now it's got all the typical upgrades that you get with the RTX 30 lineup uh, if you guys want to see more in of that I've got a, a RTX 3090 versus a RX 6900 XT 3080 versus a 6700 XT and a 3070 versus a 6700. If you guys want to see those videos, I've got the links down below. Make sure you subscribe as well. That helps out the channel and helps you find my videos as well. All right, without further ado, some of the things that are exactly the same are, so it takes advantage of the Ampere streaming multiprocessors and the streaming multiprocessors has been doubled. It's also got second generation ray tracing cores and third generation tensor cores now something else that you get on this that you don't get on the foundation addition is a axle tech fan design with one of the fans going against the rest okay so you've got the triple fans and it's called got dual ball bearings that make the fan last twice as long it's also got an all aluminium shroud in the front and back and it's got a lot of asus's tweakers such as the gpu tweaker 2 which provides a lot of uh, basically tweaking thermal controls and system monitoring which you can do if you don't want to use the AMD one but I'm quite happy with the AMD one anyway so let's get into some of the freebies that you get with it so the software as I said you get the GPU tweaker too you also get six months subscription for free with WT fast gamers private network they offer you low ping for a smoother more fluid online gaming experience you get also XSplit Gamecaster which is a streaming service you enjoy a free license with the purchase of this graphic card and you also get a quantum cloud that lets you earn extra money by sharing your graphic cards computing power and the earnings are given to you by paypal or wechat account and things like that anyways without getting into that too much let's talk about the graphic card so what they've done differently it's a 2.7 slot graphic card so it's not by any means small the built asus is saying basically they strip everything down and they've made it all up again it's a very serious look it's not the Strix OC the Strix is their lineup that you want to go for RGB so this is a very black very normal looking card no RGBs which is fine by me I don't mind not having RGBs on my computer they are also saying that Asus is engaged in max contact technology to polish the surface of the heat spreader and what that does is improve the smoothness of the on a microscopic level which gives an extra flatness which allows the dye for an enhanced thermal transfer. Asus also is talking about their tough components being a lot better such as in the PCB side of things and a fresher shroud. I'm all out on the tough at the moment. I've tested it so far. I'm okay. I'm quite happy with it. It's not as bad as it was in, in the few generations before that. So it'll, I'll be really looking forward to sharing all that with you. So it's got dual BIOS. It's got a vented backlight and it's got stainless steel bracket for nice tough look all right without further ado let's get into this now Azus has taken the RTX 3060 founders edition and made five cards out of that the first bottom of the pack is called Phoenix the next one is called tough gaming then you've got rogue Strix great ga gaming then you've got you know, tough gaming OC which is overclocked and the rogue Strix gaming OC as well which is top of the range all right let's look through their clocks here on this graph so basically the base is exactly Exactly the same and the gaming is exactly the same as well unless if you go to the OC the OC has an improvement of about 80 megahertz over everything else and sitting on top the Strix gaming OC gets an 1882 which is a 30 megahertz improvement over the tough gaming OC moving on to the boost the boost is exactly the same for all of them except for the last two uh, the tough gaming OC gets an 1882 while the rogue Strix gaming OC gets a 1912 now 
in the next graph I've got the same sort of information for you guys in a 2D stack chart. I don't like doing this because it makes some of the things look really bad if they're not. Some of the information look really bad if they're not. Now this is a bit of a cut down version. It's not going to hopefully last as long as the other reviews have lasted. So I just wanted to make it a nice quick gaming review because you wouldn't be buying this card for anything else. So first of all, let's get into some of the benchmarks. I've got the 3D Mark Time Spy for you guys. So looking at Time Spy, you've got a 9,201, just over 9,200 score, which is quite respectable for the gaming OC. Looking at the Founders Edition RTX 2060 Super, and you've got that at 8,800, 8, which is about a 200 point improvement. However, when you go to the RTX 3060 Ti, you have a nearly 3,000 points improvement. Let's move on to Fire Strike. Now, Fire Strike is an interesting one where you don't really see much of an improvement from the gaming OC and going back to the 2060 Super. However, the 3060 Ti gives a nice nearly 2,500 improvement in points. I've also got the AMD reference 6700 XT in there for you guys as well. If you guys want to see a review of that, I've got a, a review of the Sapphire Nitro Plus 5700 XT. I'll link that in the comments. Please do have a look at that. The next chart I've got for you guys is the Unigen Super Position at max settings with Direct 611 and this is at 4K. So let's look at the frames we get. The frames that you get for the gaming OC surprisingly to my disappointment was the lowest which was at 39 frames at 4K and even the 2060 Super Founders Edition beat that by 41 frames. When we move to 3060 Ti we see a nice improvement of 20 frames which is massive at 4K at this low end. The first game we'll be looking at today is Cyberpunk 2077. At max settings except for Red Dead Redemption everything else I've done is in Direct X12. Okay let's look at 4K. The Super scores a 20 while the gaming OC just has a one frame improvement. When we go to the TI version of it it goes to 26 which is a six frame improvement which is nice to see. When we go to 2K this game is still quite unplayable. On the Asus gaming OC you get 39 frames and if you had a 2060 Super I would stick with that because it's only one frame improvement. However the 3060 Ti surprisingly again has quite a bit of a jump by about 14 frames at 53 frames. The next game I have for you guys is Hitman 3 Max Settings DirectX 12 4K. We're looking at the gaming OC actually doing marginally worse by about 5Ks over the 2060 Super and we see that 3060 Ti Founders Edition at 74 frames which is quite impressive when we pair it to the gaming OC. When we move on to 2K, we see the gaming OC catching up to the old card of 2060 Super Founders Edition and beating it by a margin of error one frame. However, the 3060 really has a jump ahead of them at 131 frame. The next game I have for you guys is Metro Exodus at max setting. And this game sees the gaming OC at 34 frames and sees it beating the 2060 Super by about three frames. When we move on to the 3060 Ti, we see a nine frame improvement. Moving on to 2K. At 2K we see a five frame improvement in the gaming OC over the Super. However, the TI really has them both beat at 73 frames. Moving on to the next game, we've got Resident Evil 3. Max settings, we've got 44 frames for the Super. The gaming OC goes to 50, which is quite good. However, the TI goes to 68, which is really impressive. That's an 18 frame improvement. When we go to 2K, we see the TI really pull up ahead by about 32 frames. However, the gaming OC does quite well against the 2060 Super as well by an improvement of 11 frames. The next game I have for you guys is F1 2020. F1 2020 sees the cards being quite playable at 4K even at that 60 frame sweet spot that most people like. I like these games to be about at least at 90 frames per second. So for me, this card is unplayable at 2K. That's just my opinion. So we see the gaming OC doing 60 to 56 and we move to TI at that goes to 81. When we move to 2K, we see the Super doing 99 frames and the gaming OC really pulls up on that by 107 frames. When we go to the TI, it goes to 142, which is really impressive for the title. The next game I have for you guys is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K. At 4K, we see the Super doing 37 frames while the gaming OC does a 43 frame improvement, which is roughly a six frame improvement over the older generation 
generation card. When we go to the TI version, that does 56 frames, which is a nice 13 frame improvement. When we go to 2K gaming, we see the Super doing 71 frames, while the gaming OC does 81 frames, which is a 10 frame improvement. However, the TI does a nearly 24 frame improvement at 104 frames. Next game and the only game that I've got that has been tested in Vulcan is Red Dead Redemption 2 at max settings 4K. We see the Super doing 31 frames. Gaming OC goes to 35, an improvement of 4 frames. And when we look at the TI, that goes up by a 10 frame difference to 45 frames. When we go on to 2K Gaming, we see the Super at 48 frames, while the Gaming OC goes up to 57 frames, which is a 9 frame improvement. When we go to TI, that goes to 70 frames, which is a 13 frame improvement. Next game I have for you guys is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Assassin's Creed Odyssey at max setting 4K sees the Super really struggle at 27 frames. The gaming OC doesn't really improve much by 36 frames, although having said that at that low end at 4K that is a quite a substantial improvement. Having said that it's still not unplayable. We see the TI not really improving to 42. When we go to 2K gaming we see the Super doing 62, the gaming OC at 73 and the TI going at 81. I think in this title the gaming OC did quite well. The next game I have for you guys is Death Stranding. Death Stranding max setting 4K sees the Super at 53 frames. The gaming OC just increases that by 3 frames and the TI goes up to 72 frames which was really impressive. When we go to 2K Gaming we see the Super at 93 frames, the gaming OC at 99 and the TI going up to a whopping 126 frames. The next game I am looking today at is Battlefield 5. At 4K we have the Super at 51 frames, the gaming OC an improvement of 5 frames at 56 and the 3060 Ti at 73 frames which is really impressive again. When we move on to 2K we see an improvement of 90 frames, the gaming OC goes to 97 which is a 7 frame improvement however the Ti really pulls it out ahead at 124 frames. The next game I have for you guys is Watch Dog Legions. At 4K we see the Super doing 25 frames. When we go to the gaming OC it's much of the muchness just a margin of error one frame improvement at 26 when we go to the ti it that has a, an improvement 11 frame increase at 4k at 37 guys at 4k at this low end i have to keep reminding everyone that is quite impressive when we go on to 2k we see the super doing 40 frames the gaming oc doing 46 frames while the ti jumping all the way to 62 frames which is quite impressive again the last game i have for you guys today is witcher 3 at 4k we see witcher 3 going for about 48 frames per second on the super that's been improved by three frames in the gaming oc and the ti goes up to 69 frames which is really impressive again when we go to 2k we see the same sort of results seeing the super at 78 frames the gaming oc at 89 frames and the founders edition ti going up to 120 frames which is really really nice to see now let's see what this all means let's get an 12 game average i have tested 12 games let's look at the 4k results we see the rtx 2060 super founders edition at 40 frames the azus tough gaming oc comes at 43.33 frames which is a 3.33 frame increase which is not too bad at all we see the rtx 3060 ti founders edition at 57.25 frame improvement which is really really impressive at 4k and especially comparing that card to the reference amd 6700 XT sees the 6700 XT do 55.58 frames which is less than the founders edition TI. When we go to 2k results we see the 2060 Super doing a 71.42 frames. When we go to gaming OC we see an improvement of about over 7 frames at 78.58 frames. When we go to the RTX 3060 TI founders edition we see a nice improvement of over 20 frames frames at 101.5 however the amd reference card 6700 xt overtakes the founders edition at 2k gaming at 103 when we average all the games out the next slide i have for you guys is the cards at msrp in blue and real world pricing in green now i wouldn't be covering the founders edition cards in real world pricing as you can't buy them anymore they're not for sale they just go on sale in the start and then they vanish now first of all i've got the super the 
MSRP at release was 580. When we go to Azus Gaming OC, the MSRP here in Australia is nearly $700. When we go to the RTX 3060 Ti Founders Edition, if you had gotten your hands in Australia at MSRP, you would have been laughing at 540 as that's a really good price. The reference AMD 6700 XT should be retailing here for $630. Let's look at real world pricing. The only two cars I can get right now are the Azus Gaming OC. So the Azus Gaming RTX 3060 OC, you can get it for around $1199, which is really, really expensive for that card. When we look at the AMD 6700 XT, you can still find it around $830, $840, but I've seen it all the way up to $1100, $1149 as well. Now let's look at the best bang for your buck card between those cards. First, I'll give you guys the best bang for your buck in 2K for real world and also MSRP, then we'll move to 4K result. Looking at the Super, if you had gotten the Super when it came out, it would have been an $8.12 per frame cost, which is quite expensive. When we go to the Gaming OC, that is a $8.90 per frame. The RTX 3060 Ti Founders Edition at MSRP would have been really, really nice. It would have been just $5.32. Even the reference AMD 6700 XT is a nice cheap card if you want a good bang for your buck at 612 those two cards are really good the gaming oc is quite expensive when we move on to real world best bang for your bucks looking at the gaming oc that is a 15 dollars and 26 frame card each frame costs you over 15 dollars and looking at the amd reference card that only costs you about eight dollars if you can get it at the 830 price however i've seen them around 1100 as well now the next chart i've got for you guys is 4k gaming best bang for your buck now looking at the super that will cost you about $14.50 to game at 4k the gaming oc would cost you $16.13 the founders edition ti would cost you $9.43 and the reference 6700 xt would cost you $11.34 moving on to real world pricing the gaming oc would cost $27.67 guys that's ridiculous and the 6700 xt in real world pricing would cost you just over $14 for gaming. Now get into my opinion. Now right now guys does it matter the card is going to cost you for gay gaming nearly $28 per frame? Mm, to me it does. To you it would. It would hurt to cost that much. It's not worth it at all. I would say it's not worth it. Even at the MSRP $16 that's quite steep. I would have tried to get my hands on a founders edition RTX 3060 Ti which would have cost me under $10. $16, $10 that's a big difference for 4K. Even when you look at 2K, the difference is nearly halved at MSRP being nearly $9 and $5. But right now, unfortunately, that doesn't matter. Any piece of silicon that is being made, especially into a GPU, gets sold immediately. Let's imagine that if you were living in the future and prices had subsided, and if you didn't care about what kind of graphic card you wanted, whether you were blue team, green team, I would consider the reference AMD 6700 XT or any 6700 XT. XTAIB card around that price. If it's around that price, even at the real world pricing of 830, 840, 850, I would buy the card. 6700 XTAIB card over the Asus Gaming OC is just a stupidly priced card. Even the cards in the 6700 XT is overpriced. I saw a Asus Tough Gaming OC 6700 XT priced at 1400 Aussie dollars. That's just crazy. I would never pay that much for that card. If you're watching this in the future, I would seriously consider getting the 6700 XT or finding a card that's a lot lower. I would strongly consider getting a RTX 3060 Ti. Don't worry about the marketing gimmick of VRAM being 12 gigs, 8 gigs. Don't worry about it. As you can see from these games, the Azus Gaming OC is an overclocked 12 gig VRAM. And when we compare it to the RTX 3060 Ti, which only has 8 gigs of VRAM, it beat it not only on price, not only on average games, but on everything on 2K okay it's a much better card so if you're going for a card stay clear of the rtx 3060 go for the rtx 3060 ti or the aib version of the 6700 xt ti all right guys let me know in the comments what i've missed what you liked about this video or any changes you'd like to see i'd really love to hear from you guys i hope you really enjoyed this video and i would like to thank you for staying to the end take care bye bye